Uh, we'll start in a minute, guys. There's a visual do now. I'll try and make it a little bigger so you can see. Um, how did the United States start moving out of the Great Depression? Now you're going to get a photo that's a political cartoon that's kind of popular. Uh, describe what you see in the photo. You can just start writing stuff down in the chat. Um, it's weird because we kind of just started the Great Depression yesterday for the double period, but we're actually going to start to look at how America tries to move out of it. Though they're unsuccessful in a lot of ways, they're going to try and put some policies together to help improve things. Another 30 more seconds, just write down the focus question. If you see anything in the do now that kind of makes sense, like who do these figures represent? Um, there's three people. you got these bottle-looking things on the left. Um, let's kind of take a look. Louise next to appears to be an old man. Yeah, he is a little old. Okay, New Deal Remedies, good. I noticed a hat says FDR. I'm pretty sure I got the U.S. out of the Great Depression. Uh, yes and no, Mahin. We'll talk about that. On the woman's clothing, it says Congress. Yep. Okay, again, Tiana. Good. All right. So let's let's let me ask some questions that you guys can go into the chat with. But before we do that, um, let's just do a review from the bonus army. Just a quick regions question. Uh, start with the chat with that. This is uh, from the DBQ yesterday slash the end of the lesson. So during the early 1930s, the main goal of the bonus army was to pressure the Hoover administration to what? Thank you, buddy. All right, have a good one, Baduzi. A lot of fours coming in. Looks like four is correct. Yes. Okay. If you know that a bonus has to do with uh, a payment, uh, support the early payment of money promised to veterans, um, we know that that eventually meant to the, um, the military being brought in. And that led to a little bit of a violent uh, riot that uh, caused some issues here. Um, so I think long story short, they do get the payments, but they don't get them to like the 1935 or 36. It, it, they're supposed to get them in like 1930 and it takes like another five, six years, but eventually they do get them. All right. So this was the last blemish on Herbert Hoover's record. So it's time to look towards a new presidency and a new way to attack the Great Depression. All right, so let's look at this visual do now. Let me first start. The guy in the middle is correct. That is Franklin D. Roosevelt. He's the new president um, that's going to be elected at the time. Um, his whole platform for getting elected was basically trying to help out the country out of the Great Depression, which, you know, makes sense. All right, who is the person here sitting down on the left? Who does this person represent or look like? A little tough. He is an older man, but he's meant to be a symbol of something. When your brother or sister has a baby, they may name, you may be called this if you're a male. Oh, I just got blank. All blank. Is that an old Uncle Sam? Yes, that's who it is. It's Uncle Sam without his hat. Okay. And the way you can kind of tell this is he looks a little like sick and disheveled, but you could tell his uh, American stars and stripes, pants, and then you got his socks, his stripes. It's maybe not the best thing. You have to look kind of closely, but political cartoons, that's what happens. So this is Uncle Sam. Now we know this is FDR. Now you may not get this, but I'll ask you. 
what profession does FDR represent in this photo? Because he's not the president right now. I'll tell you the bottles in a second. Excellent, Nevaeh and Anisia. Very nice job. He represents a doctor. Now, you may say that, you know, doctors, don't they wear the scrubs? Well, back then, not really. They used to wear this kind of bow tie and this nice outfit. Um, so this is FDR acting as a doctor, and this is his patient, Uncle Sam, okay, a.k.a. America. Um, Milagros asks, what's with all the bottles? Okay, now, if you've ever gotten, like, Robitussin or if you've had cough syrup, you would notice that some medicines can be used in liquid form. Before, you know, like 1980, 1990, a lot of medicines were all liquid. Okay, so these are actual bottles that are meant to be medicine. All right, so what ends up happening is you have this medicine, okay, that has all of these letters on it. You have the CCC, you have the CWA, you have the FDIC back here, you have FERA. And what these medicines are supposed to be is they're supposed to be basically medicines to help out Uncle Sam who's in need. Okay, and then he tells a little joke to Congress. He says, of course, we may have to change remedies if we don't get results. So basically, he wants to throw together all of these medicines to fix Uncle Sam. Okay, so how does a government help out its people? We're going to start to see that. Again, Tiana, not necessarily the new laws, but they're the new programs. Okay, and programs and laws are very similar. But yes, you are correct. So these are the new programs and laws that is going to be used to maybe help out America. And this is through something called the New Deal. All right. So the next slide is something you don't need to copy down. But I think we need to have this discussion first before we move forward. The 1920s presidents of Harding, Coolidge, and Hoover, those three presidents were all Republicans. Now, we're not going to look at Republicans and Democrats besides really anything besides government intervention or how much the government should be responsible. So basically what makes politics so tricky is when there is an issue, maybe it's abortion, maybe it's immigration, maybe it's um, COVID, maybe it's race, Republicans and Democrats always have a differing view. But we're going to look at the differences in how they view how government should be involved. All right, so let's first start with the Republicans, the presidents of the 1920s and early 1930s. So the Republicans generally want small government. So what that means is they don't want the federal government to be that involved in people's lives. The idea is that people on their own should be able to make a good life for themselves. The less a government's involved, the better it should be. The government's going to provide usually less taxes. There'll be less programs, okay? There might not be like as much welfare or unemployment. We'll talk about all that soon. And they want Americans to live their own lives more without government interference. So you would see this more from the Republican presidents all throughout history. Less government intervention. And I want you to think of a teacher. There are some teachers who kind of like are a little bit more hands-off and let you kind of do your work. I don't know where I fall in that category. Maybe I'm more a little bit more hands-off as a teacher because I trust you guys to do the work. And then there are students here who do wonderful at that, haven't missed an assignment or getting high 90s and the hundreds, and they benefit from a, a teacher that's a little bit more hands-off. The society is very similar, right? and hopefully you understand the comparison. Society is very similar because there are people who can make a lot of money, do fine for themselves, and if they're not being barred down, okay, and there's not too much stuff given to them, they end up doing okay. So like if a teacher is giving you a ton of work, that may overwhelm certain people, okay, and that could lead to some problems as well. So that's more of the Republican side, going to be a little bit more hands-off, all right? The Democrats, if you're in terms of government, they generally want bigger government. They want the federal government more involved in people's lives. Now, that leads to generally more taxes, higher taxes, because they're doing more programs. Like um, if there's a job out there that you have to do, like if I came to fix your sink, that's going to cost you money. But if I get there and like, hey, uh, my sink's broken, my toilet's broken, and uh, my shower needs some work too, well, that's going to cost more money. So the more that the government does, the more taxes it needs. 
Now, we know it's not just taxes. We also know deficit spending. We know that's a thing, too. But ultimately, it's going to cost from some money, and it's going to come from somewhere. All right? So the government's going to tax more money to use towards the people that are in need. All right? Welfare, entitlement, programs. Okay? We'll talk about all those a little bit soon. They want Americans to trust more of the government to help them out when they are in need. So that's a huge difference between a Republican and a Democrat in terms of how the government operates. Think of a teacher um, who is very hands-off. Well, then there's some students that can fall by the, the wayside. There are some students that you know don't do any work because they're not really being looked after very uh, strictly. right? But then you have the teachers that maybe are more strict and are constantly on the students. Well, that may benefit some students who get a little lazy, so to speak. All right, so does that uh, the school analogy doesn't make any sense? Okay, Nisia, do you want to um, share in the chat or, or tell me um, why or why it doesn't make sense? It's not like they're on top of each other, like, constantly. They're just giving some, like, help. It's, like, not like school where you have to, like, meet these requirements, like, life. It's, like, no deadline or anything. Okay. Just, I think it's, like, stupid analogy. Okay. Well, I, I, I use the analogies from teacher-student because I, I just think it's, it's good, but I, I see what you're saying. I think it's good just to understand and think as a, you know, a lot of students here aren't so familiar with the government and how it kind of operates. So I think you have relationships with teachers and you know the different types of teachers and students. But if it's not a good analogy for you, um, I'm sorry about that. Um, Milagros, you didn't have to write it down. I thought I made that clear. Um, if you did, though, that's that's perfectly fine. This was just something for us to kind of get a better understanding of, all right? But um, if you did write it down, it's perfectly fine. It, it's good to kind of know the differences between the Republicans and Democrats. Anisi, I do appreciate you sharing uh, your opinion and analysis on it. So if it's not a great thing, oh, you're into notes today, cool. If it's not a great thing for you, that's perfectly fine. If you have a good understanding of the differences between Republicans and Democrats in terms of government intervention, then that's perfectly fine. All right. So this is something I don't need you to write down either. So if you want to write it down, you can. I just want to kind of go through it. So Herbert Hoover does run for election again, re-election. He ends up not winning. Okay. He's going to run against Franklin D. Roosevelt in the election of 1932. Okay. And pretty much you can understand because you know, the Great Depression is in full effect at this point. Uh, Herbert Hoover's blamed for the suffering of the poor. They got the Hoovervilles. He's pretty much not going to be reelected because of this. Um, so Americans are pretty ready for a change by 1932. Um, Hoover's blamed for this. And basically, FDR runs on the campaign of a new deal for the American people. And in other words, he basically says the government's going to take more of an active role to try and help out the people that are in need. Okay, so let's see how we kind of go about doing this. Okay, when Herbert Hoover leaves and Franklin D. Roosevelt takes over, I'm just going to show you some photos to kind of show you what the Great Depression looks like. I think if you've been in sixth grade at the school, you would have seen these photos. Let me know if you've seen this photo on the left specifically. Is that a familiar photo? Okay, we've got a couple of people that have. Yeah, this is a pretty famous photo from the Great Depression um, of a woman, you know, with her children kind of, you know, looking all in despair. She was looking out into the uh, edge there. Um, Rosemary, so that's, I'm not so sure, I, I don't know how I feel about that question. I don't know if it gets worse. I don't know if it would get better. It might stay the same. But what I would say was, and this is something I had just recently learned. I'm talking like two months ago. I just recently learned towards the end of Herbert Hoover's presidency, he really started to try to put together some new government programs, some of them that FDR would end up kind of following along with, which I'll show you a little bit later. Um, so I think he tried to step in a little, little bit more, so he might have taken a more active role. Um, but what you'll notice is FDR is going to help but even FDR doesn't get us out of the Great Depression. It's, it's something else. But I think if Herbert Hoover took more of an active role in helping out the people, it's certainly possible. But it's impossible for me to really, to really say. 
Um, I will say that he was quite unpopular, so he would have continued to get the blame. When FDR steps in, he doesn't really get the blame anymore, so it's kind of like a fresh start. So I think people are happy about that, so to speak. All right, so these are some famous photos here. We'll learn, I think, on Friday, you'll learn about this dust storm cloud here. Okay, you'll learn about that uh, a little bit later, what this dust bowl was, which is just a crazy thing. So it's not just the ec economic problems, there's some environmental issues. Um, this is a pretty famous photo. Now you used to have people um, walking around. Uh, this was a former person from the Bonus Army. This is a veteran. And um, you know, he's walking around with these uh, posters, basically just walking around for a job. Any job will do. Um, still kind of dressed kind of nice, though. You can see that from the 1920s, right, guys? Um, oh, from the Bonus Army, Gentiana? I think it was two. I think two was correct. Okay. Yep, good information. I, I, I couldn't remember if it was one, two, three, exactly whatever it was, but it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a, a large amount, but, you know, one or two is still very sad. All right. Um, does anyone know what this is called here? Free soup, coffee, and donuts for the unemployed. These are things that you would start to see under uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Excellent. That's a soup kitchen. Okay. This used to be free food, and you could see the lines going literally out the door to uh, help people that are in need. Now, there are things like this today. There's shelters, you know, there's soup kitchens, there's things along these lines to help out people that are in need. And these came out for the first time throughout the Great Depression. All right, and we saw this photo already. Okay, let's try these two regions questions. I don't know how we'll do with them. Let's see how they go. So President Herbert Hoover's response to the Great Depression was often criticized because it what? Okay, good, four. It failed to provide direct relief to the neediest persons. Basically, Herbert Hoover, you know, thought that, you know, people would be able to work it out on their own, and unfortunately, that didn't seem to be the case because things were worse under Hoover. Uh, President Herbert Hoover's refusal to provide funds for the unemployed during the Depression was based on his belief that what? This is a kind of tougher one. This is a tougher one. Ooh, it's not one, it's not two. Good try. I appreciate you guys trying that. It is four. All right, so let me break down what it says. One's a great guess. The unemployment problem is not serious. No president is going to ever want people to be unemployed. That is a serious issue. He was worried about the issue, but he thought it would work itself out. He thought it would get better in time. And he thought he didn't have to do much to stop. And remember, that's the very Republican thought at the time, like not to intervene, very lousy, fair, hands off, and it should work itself out. All right. The federal relief programs would destroy individual initiative. What that means is if there is a federal program and people are provided jobs or people are provided money, let's say, then that would destroy their individual initiative. Initiative basically means people taking the lead to do something. All right. So... If, you know, you need money and I give you money, that's fine. But now that means you're not going to maybe go out and get a job right away. You know, so his thought was kind of like, hey, let's give people the opportunity to get their own jobs, to work it out on their own, because if we just provide them things, that's going to ruin an indiv individual initiative. That's a tough question. Uh, that's one of the harder questions I think you'd come across for sure on this issue. All right. So please write this down. All right, so let's look at um, FDR's three goals of the New Deal. We're gonna spend a little bit of time on goals one and two, and a ton of time, we're gonna spend the next day and a half on number three. Oh, sorry. All right. So please write down his three goals, okay? First thing is, he wants to give relief. He wants to give immediate help for the needy. Okay, um, people that have lost their jobs, uh, banks, okay, banks were huge because all of those bank flows, he wanted to help out the banks, he wanted to give relief to not just people in need, I shouldn't say people, but programs and businesses in need as well. You saw this with COVID, when COVID started a little bit, if you're really paying attention, they started giving out stimulus checks, or they started giving out money um, to businesses or small businesses that were in need because those businesses had closed down, they were called, um, you guys wanna look up PPE loans? That's kind of following the New Deal. 
Okay, you want to help out the people that are immediately in need. All right, if someone gets sick from an issue, you want to help them out first before you do anything else. All right, the next thing is he wants to help recover. So he wants to build temporary programs. Thank you, Milagros. Temporary programs to restart the economy. So the economy is kind of falling down. A lot of ways it's not working. So he wants to give some kind of uh, help in terms of helping out these economies. Um, if you guys know what a, a, def a defibrillator is, sorry, I butchered that defibrillator is, that like if the heart stops, that kind of gives a jolt to the heart. And that's kind of the way it was always taught to me. It's just some temporary programs to restart the economy. Temporary meaning they're not going to last forever. Okay, so they're going to be, you'll see some things that I show you here that are just temporary. Okay, don't last a long time. Where the major things are the reform. What's another word for reform? Very simple word. Excellent, change. All right, change is the thing that is most known from the New Deal. These are programs to help prevent another depression slash make sure the people are always kind of looked after by the government. All right, and these are the programs that kind of still exist today. A big one you'll learn um, on Thursday is Social Security. You'll learn all of these programs. FDR's reform programs are called the New Deal. Okay, which we'll look at if you see your assignment, we're gonna start looking at some of those programs, all right? Let's go into the last slide I think you're doing for today. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Nope, not the last slide, okay? All right, so let's look at his first two steps, okay? So these are under the relief aspect of FDR's new policy, all right? So step one of the relief and recovery. recovery. So step one is, since the banks collapsed and no one trusted the banks, FDR closed all of the banks in the United States for four total days. And this is now known as the bank holiday. Okay? So you guys understand how holidays work. You guys are all from school from holidays. Okay, businesses shut down. It's four days off. All right? And I'll try and basically give an understanding of why they needed to do this. Um, basically, they need the banks to get their, their stuff together. They need to get their crap together because so many banks are closing down and he needs to give the banks a little bit of time off. So for four days, you weren't able to get a loan. You weren't able to take money out of the bank. You weren't able to do anything related to the bank. So they needed to regroup and I guess recharge their battery, so to speak, because they've been um, really struggling. All right, so you see this little headline here. Banks of the entire nation are closed for a brief holiday. Now, this is also in the relief, but this is kind of the recovery part that I was talking about. This was a temporary thing to help restart the economy. All right. Now, were there others? Absolutely. But this is the only one I've ever seen on the regions. All right. So while the banks were closed, the U.S. passed the Emergency Banking Relief Act. So this was a law that was passed which helped the banks raise money. Okay. Do you guys know what a depositor is? A depositor is someone who deposits or puts money into the bank. We know so many people have lost money from the banks. So basically, the government's going to put out this law and tell the banks that you need to pay back all of your depositors within a couple of months. If you can't do that, if you can't afford that, you need to shut down. All right, so let me explain. Banks could only reopen if they could pay back its depositors. If, let's say, HSBC Bank, okay, which is a pretty popular bank, if that particular bank could not pay back the people that were in its government, then guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that bank was going to be shut down forever. All right, and here's what happens. When a bank shuts down and another bank stays open, people from the bank that shut down, what do they now do? Hopefully according to the government. So if your bank shuts down and you don't have a place to keep your money or you can't get a loan, what do you need to do now? Right, very straightforward. Gotta go to the other bank. All right, so what happens is the banks that are not strong enough to stay open, it's kind of like social Darwinism in some ways, right? The banks that aren't strong enough to stay open and can't stay open, they close 
and now everyone filters to the other banks that are open. All right, so these are both known as the Bank Holiday and the Emergency Banking Relief Act. Okay. These were the two things to help jumpstart our economy, and it helps. Okay, it helps out a little bit. All right, I think we have two regions questions, and I think we have um, one more slide we need to copy down. But as you notice, today's a two-day lesson. So that means you're going to have all of today and tomorrow to work on the assignment that goes along with it. All right, you guys have it all there, so we're just going to move on. All right, let's try this. Soon after Franklin D. Roosevelt became president in 1933, he supported what? All right, three is correct. Expanded programs of direct relief to the unemployed. All right. The major purpose of Roosevelt's bank holiday of 1933 was to what? I don't, get, I don't think we explicitly said this, but I think you could figure it out. Good, guys. One is correct. Restore the public confidence in the nation's banks. Okay? We're trying to basically get people to believe again that banks can provide, they're not going to lose your money, they can provide loans, um, they can do all the things that they are set to do because they were not able to at the start of the Great Depression. Okay, last thing. Okay, last thing. Um, I guess I just need you to write down what's in red, but I definitely want us to read what's in green and what's in blue, because I think these are just general things that are kind of, you know, good to know both sides of it sort of thing. All right, so the New Deal were a series of government programs to help try and get the United States out of the Great Depression. If you look back to this photo, okay, you would notice, hold on one sec, if you look back to this photo here, these are all the quote unquote New, New Deal programs. And what he did was, he wanted to make it easy for them to understand. So he created something called Alphabet Soup. Do they still sell Alphabet Soup or am I that old? You guys know what Alphabet Soup is? Like from the actual Alphabet Soup? Okay. They, I believe they got that from the New Deal programs. And what he did was he wanted to create a program. And I'll just give you one. Uh, he wanted to create the National Recovery administration and that was one of the programs he created right but he didn't call it that he calls it the nra and not the national rifle association this is for the new deal he created the federal deposit insurance corporation right big fancy thing that might be a little tough to remember he didn't call it that they called it the fdic all right. This way, it was easier for people to kind of like remember and it was easier to kind of say. All right. It was just like one of those ways to kind of, you know, make it easier for people. All right. So all of these government programs, that's why when Gentiana asked, were they laws? They're not really laws. Most of them were government programs. There were some laws. There were some laws, but most of them were just programs designed by the executive branch of the federal government. And um, they were to try and help get the United States out of the Great Depression and help out people that were in need. Uh, these programs were specifically to help people that were poor, people that were unemployed, uh, the banking system, we saw the banking system, the stock market, we know the stock market crashed, so that needs to be fixed. The elderly, older people got absolutely decimated from the Great Depression, we'll talk about more of that on Thursday. Farmers, we'll talk about more of that tomorrow, and others that were in just in general need. So the people that got hit hardest for the Great Depression, uh, America looked at and said, okay, we don't want to make this mistake again, so let's create some programs designed to kind of do that. Yeah, you just need to copy just the red, um, but I think you should definitely read what's in green and read what's in blue. All right? So pro of the New Deal is that the government tries to help out the people that are in need. Okay, that's... You know, always a good thing if someone's in need and someone comes to help out, you know, that's pretty much a good thing. All right. 
they created number two, created programs that would help prevent another Great Depression. If you've noticed, guys, we haven't had the Great Depression part two. We've had some tough economic times, like in 2008 and 1977. We've had some tough economic times since then, but not the Great Depression. Okay, we didn't have the Greater Depression. So obviously some of these programs of the New Deal have been good, okay, and have kind of prevented another Great Depression. All right, some cons of the New Deal. When the government creates programs for people, we know it costs money, so taxes are gonna go up. Um, if it's not a tax for you, it might be some deficit spending to go up for its citizens and puts us into more debt. So we, we saw that whole issue yesterday. And uh, number two, the goal of the New Deal was to get America out of the Great Depression, um, but that doesn't really get us out of the Great Depression. It helps. It moves us in the right direction. It improves, but it doesn't pull us out of the Great Depression. Something else does. And if you know it, don't share it because you're killing my, I, I wanna explain it more as time goes on, but something else gets us out of the Great Depression. Okay, because it's not the New Deal. All right, but these programs do help. Uh, some of these programs still exist today. Uh, the FDIC is one you'll learn about. Uh, the Social Security Act is another. The SEC, you're going to learn about what these programs are. Okay. Sure, Mahin, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would actually say that uh, that's what happens in the Soviet Union towards the late 1980s and early 1990s. Um, so absolutely. Yeah, depression is not just something that happens in capitalist countries. The Great Depression was a worldwide depression. So it hit capitalist countries, it hit communist countries, it hit everyone. You know, it's, uh, it's not, you know, when, when, pe when money's not coming in and people are unemployed, that's a problem for every type of uh, country. Um, Abigail, yes, it does have to do with World War II. And I will answer that on Friday. Um, no, well, Liz Mel, I, I guess just watch the end of the video on YouTube because I'm just going to explain how to do the assignment. Sure, or absolutely, I can explain the Emergency Banking Relief Act. So it's a law, okay? It's a law that gives banks the opportunity to pay back their depositors. People that, I, I, let's not use depositors, people to pay back. Um, their people in the bank. Okay, so if you were part of the bank, okay, how do you do that? Okay, gives bank gives the bank some money and time to pay back their people. If they can't do it, I forget what it was. It, it's a couple of months. If they couldn't do it in a couple of months, they shut the bank down for good. Okay, so it gives them an opportunity to pay back the people that they owe money. When the Great Depression hits, remember, people lose all of their money in the banks. Okay, if their bank closes down, they lose all of their money. So this gives them an opportunity to now pay back some people. Correct. All right, that's probably the easiest way to understand it. And that's really all you need to know for the regions. I gave people the opportunity to get their money back from the banks. All right. This is a lesson I just want you to get started with, okay? Because you're going to spend pretty much all of tomorrow. Thank you, Aura. Glad you understand. Pretty much all of tomorrow, you're going to be working on this. So if you could get one or two done, that's great. It kind of gets you set up here. But what you have here is a federal program that is a New Deal program. All right, so the first one here is the NLRA. So this is the National Labor Relations Act, also known as the Wagner Act. So this isn't a government program. This is a, um, this is a law. But they kind of work hand in hand because they're, they're trying to, their programs and laws designed to help out people. So what you then have to do is, okay, say, okay, I need to go to the Wagner Act screenshot. You see all these things in blue? Okay, if it tells you in blue, it's going to tell you where to go. If it's in green, it's, you're going to go to a reading. So let's go to the Wagner Act screenshot. So I'm going to go back here. All right, I'm going to click on the Wagner Act screenshot as it loads very slowly. And I'm going to read what this says. Okay, so okay. Um, its main purpose, we're going to put what the reading says. You can take it, you know, quote like you would. You go back, you write the quote down into this box. 
You're then going to take that quote, and then my favorite thing is put it into your own words. So try and put it at a level that you can understand that makes it easy for you. Okay? Um, we will eventually go over all of these, but you're going to take what it says in the reading or on the screenshot and put it into your own words. Let's say we go to the WPA, the Work Progress Administration. It's going to say, look in the reading. Okay, the reading is the one on the top right. It says the New Deal has a picture of Roosevelt in the car. Okay, now you want to go down and find where they talk about the WPA, which I believe is on page one. I might have missed it. Yep, the WPA is right here. So you can read through this, put it into your own words. All these dudes look creepy. Yeah, it's a little bit of a weird photo of him. Not going to lie. Um, so you put what's, in your, uh, put what's in the reading and then put it into your own words. You will spend about the next 10 minutes working on this. You're not going to finish. It's okay. Don't work on it tonight. Take a break. Tomorrow you get pretty much the full period to work on this, and then we'll wrap up with some final notes. All right, does that make sense? Do you guys have any questions on what you have to do for this assignment, or are we all good? Okay, please don't go anywhere. I haven't had a chance to take attendance yet, so just hang tight. Uh, but that is what you're doing for the rest of the period. Okay, so Nevaeh, if you want to finish it all today, you still have to come to class and sit here and hang out with me because we have to do just finish up the lesson and go over some notes. But if you want to do that and go get ahead so you don't have to do it tomorrow, I have no problem with that. All right, but there are, we have to like wrap up the lesson. So you have to definitely be here. I can't just say you finish it tonight. You don't have to come tomorrow. So you have to do some final things. But uh, hey, if you want to get some work done early so you can spend a little time off tomorrow, I'm never going to say no to that. I was kind of saying it more along the lines of like, hey, you know, don't worry about any homework tonight. Don't finish it up because it's due tomorrow. All right, keep working. I'll be here if you need me.